Hey there, I'm Joe Dickerson with the Joe Dickerson Group at Keller Williams Realty in Oakland, California, serving San Francisco Bay Area's home buyers, sellers, and investors. We have a passion for helping people build wealth through real estate, and we understand that the education process is key for successful investments. So in this video, we'll walk through your inspection and investigation period, the things that you should be looking for, and the perils of waiving your rights to these inspections and plenty more. Your inspection contingency period is your time as the buyer to perform all due diligence that you require in order to move forward comfortably with the purchase. In our current market in Oakland and the East Bay especially, it's very common for this contingency to be completely waived, and yet we don't recommend it. And we'll talk about why a bit later. Though the, cont the contingency period protects you and allows you to back out of a purchase should troubling information about the home be discovered. The inspection period and your rights as a buyer is outlined right in the purchase contract. The length of time varies significantly depending on circumstances, though in the fast-paced markets like ours, this, this period typically lasts between zero and 14 or so days after entering into a contract to purchase. Because this timing is tight, due diligence should actually be begin before an offer is even submitted. Before even submitting an offer, it is a great time to confirm the basics, the neighborhood amenities, crime rates, schools, etc., and also making sure that the home meets your criteria. You'd be surprised. In certain circumstances, uh, it might even be warranted to hire a professional inspector uh, during this phase as well, before you even submit an offer. Additionally, you'll want to review whatever information and disclosures have been provided by the seller. In our previous video, we went through the topic of seller disclosures in depth, and check out that, that, that video in the link below. After entering into a purchase contract, it's time to get serious. The types of inspections you'll perform will vary uh, greatly depending on the property and depending what we know about that property's condition. Conditions such as uh, being on a hillside, for example, may warrant different types of inspections. At a minimum, though, uh, we almost always recommend hiring a general home inspector and a wood-destroying pests and organisms inspector. These licensed professionals will give you a firm foundation on which to base the rest of your due diligence. The general home inspector is going to inspect the entire property from the perspective of a generalist, and that is, they'll run uh, all the appliances and visually inspect all the systems such as plumbing and electrical, uh, and comment on the general condition of things like the foundation and the roof, and as, as well as everything related to the property grounds. This inspector is likely going to recommend some sort of further inspections by specialists or contractors to bid on repairs or corrections. The most common suggestion that we hear from general home inspectors are to get a specialist to look at the roof. And whether you as, as the buyer choose to follow the inspector's advice is up to you. In addition to the general home inspection, we typically re recommend completing a, uh, a pest report, a wood destroying pests and organisms report. This licensed inspector is specifically looking for conditions that destroy wood, uh, which is a main component, structural component of the home. The common wood destroying pests that we come across in these reports are termites, uh, wood destroying beetles, fungus, and dry rot. Uh, in addition, they're looking for, in, in addition to looking for infestations, they're also looking for conditions that will lead to these infestations. So look, f uh, look at the various sections of this pest report. Uh, it'll have a few. Section one items are those active infestations that likely need to be treated pretty quickly, lest they spread. Section two are conditions that can lead to the growth or invitation of pests. And section three is reserved for uh, recommendations for further inspection. The most common item found in this sec in section three are parts of the structure that were inaccessible to inspection. Section three items should not be taken lightly. Things that appear in this section uh, could easily be hiding big, scary infestations, potentially costing tens of thousands of dollars to, to remediate. 
Anytime an inspector recommends further inspection, the risks of not doing so should be carefully assessed. In addition to a home and pest inspection, you may choose to hire professionals to look at a variety of things regarding the property, including drainage, uh, seismic strength, pool systems, and lots more. You may also want to do further investigations on your own. Uh, make sure that your car fits in the driveway, for example, uh, that the soil conditions and sunlight are adequate for your dream garden, uh, that you can sleep at night when the neighbor's rock band is practicing in the garage. All these things can be investigated at this time. You may also choose to inspect none of these things, and that's okay too. Uh, there are no inspections that are actually required, uh, though many may be recommended. These inspections are for you, ultimately, as the buyer, so it is up to you. I suspect the perils of waiving your rights to this inspection uh, to inspect is a little clearer now after seeing all the things that can and often should be investigated. If you choose not to have inspections be a contingency of the sale, you're often contractually bound to proceed with the purchase or else forfeit your deposit regardless of what you find during the process. So I hope that's helped outline the importance of an inspection contingency and gave you ideas for things you should be looking out for when investigating a property. So what are some things that, that are important to you that you'll be sure to inspect? And what's the weirdest thing that you've come across during inspections? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, if you like this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends, and please be sure to subscribe.